Hi, I'm David Bloom, Associate Dean and Chief Communications Officer at the USC Marshall School of Business. We're here today with Ed Lawler, Distinguished Professor and Director of the Center for Effective Organizations here at USC Marshall. Uh, we're talking to Ed about his new book, uh, Talent, Making People Your Competitive Advantage. It's on Josie Bass and it's coming out in April of 2008. Uh, welcome, Dr. Lawler. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about this notion of talent. It's kind of the hot term you said and uh, uh, it's where uh, the, the, the oversight of people in your corporation, that's where we're, we're going now. But what, what are the basic tenets of talent and managing them for competitive advantage that you talk about in your book? Well, the book stresses the fact that if you're going to have talent be a source of competitive advantage, it requires more than just good personnel systems, as we used to call them, or human resource management systems. It really designs conceptualizing the way the organization is designed and managed and led around the idea that by having people who can do things better uh, and more innovatively and differently than your competitor, you can gain a significant competitive advantage. So that means you need to do things like structure your board differently than you would in an organization where your competitive advantage is cash acquisition or natural resources. You need to have a different leadership style. Mm -hmm. You need a different information system and so on throughout all the elements of, the, of an organization that is designed. So your book is mostly targeted for top level managers and board members, is that correct? It's targeted at people who think about, worry about, and do organization design, uh, management, structure creation, okay. organization creation. Um, they might be in strategy, they might be in HR, they might be in information systems creation within organizations, but it's, it's not addressed to very much how an individual manager deals with an individual talent or person in the organization. Okay. It certainly has some clues as to things you should look for if you're a manager, things you should concentrate on, but that's not really the primary target of the, of the book. If you mentioned you would structure your board differently. Well, give me an example of what would be different for this kind of approach than one, say, uh, focused on cash acquisition, as you put it. Yeah. Well, certainly the most obvious one is, is the expertise on the board. Mm -hmm. um, many CEOs uh, state that human capital, human assets are our most people, are our most important asset. Uh, we value them, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've all heard the... Uh, those little speeches, and we've all read annual reports where there's a picture of a smiling employee and a statement that here's our most important asset, et cetera. Um, but if you start looking at the board uh, and you see who the members are and what their expertise is, particularly post Sarbanes Axley, their expertise is usually the financial world. Right. Um, how do we control it? How do we manage it? What kind of information do we get about it? Right makes sense that if people are your most important assets, you give at least as much attention to them and the measures you have and who they are and what they're doing and right. as you do to your financial assets. So the audit committee would be matched by a, a personnel or human yeah. or talent well, it's, committee it's or something? It's kind of interesting that if you look at most corporate boards today, yeah, they have an audit committee, um, they have a designated expert in the financial area, but they have nothing comparable in the human resource, human capital right. area. They may have a human resource committee but that committee usually worries about executive comp, mm -hmm. and, and that's about it. Maybe, right. maybe it looks at some board issues, but not the organization staffing, treatment of talent, uh, succession management, et cetera, et cetera, uh, as they would uh, right. if it was cash that they were worried about. So they don't take that next step. They may get that very sort of veneer at the top kinds of questions on talent management, but nothing about 95% of the organization. Well, at best they get that. If you look at the recent uh, firings of executives and right. the quandary that boards seem to be in when they find that the executive, that the, the one person that they've listened to, the chair or CEO, is not doing a good job, you'd have to believe they're not even really very zeroed in on what's going on for the very top level people. Right. Which organization after organization in the last few months has shown they don't have a succession plan. Right. Right. At the minimum, they ought to have that. Exactly. They mm -hmm. figure out who's going to be the next CEO. The where, next are we, where are we going to go? Right. I mean, it's not just if they're incompetent, if they have a health problem or something comes up. What we, what's happens. our next step? Right. You know, what's, what's out there in the world that we should be look, know, knowing about? Right. Who, right. Who's available? Who, what have we done internally to develop people? Hmm. So you talked as well about things like uh, information systems. Would you need to have an information system, for instance, that includes some way to flag and 
uh, funnel for further attention that those high performers in some way are those ones that you want to yeah. build into your succession for the long term? Is that the sort of thing you're talking about? Absolutely. Um, part of it is information about talent in the organization, what its trajectory is, what its skill set is. Um, that kind of information ought to be coming to the board all the time, but also we ought to know something about just the general condition of the workforce. Are they committed to the organization? Are they motivated? What do they think of the management style of the organization? One of the most fundamental things uh, research on organizational effective shows is that people perform better and get more excited about going to work if they know the business strategy and they know how the company's doing. And most boards have no idea whether people throughout the organization know the strategy, right. know what the source of competitive advantage is that the organization is trying to achieve, mm. and uh, react to that favorably. Interesting. So there, there's a, a whole bunch of stuff that companies can do, but they've been very slow to come to this. It would seem to me that this um, is particularly interesting to happen at a time when more companies than ever are about knowledge, about uh, intellectual capital, no. human capital, as opposed to physical capital or money or anything else, they leverage based on who's coming in the door and going up the elevator every year, every day. Yeah, it, certainly the idea of talent being a source of competitive advantage is not new, um, but over the last decade, two decades maybe in particular, the percentage of a corporation's asset that is, falls into the intangible category right. has skyrocketed to the point where for most large corporations, as much as 80% of their market value is a reflection of things that aren't being publicly reported uh, as assets of the company, hmm. the, the knowledge, the intellectual capital, the people, and the brand. So it's not, it's not all just people and their ability to right. work together, right. but that's an important part of the asset value of companies, more and more so. It mm. wasn't when we had a lot of manufacturing jobs uh, where machine tools and plants and equipment and so forth were the major asset. It right. probably made sense to focus on those assets in that era. Absolutely. But that era is over. We're not a manufacturing country, at least in the United States anymore. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, talent is the scarcest resource right now in our previous conversation. What did you mean by that? Well. What I, what I meant was that because jobs, by and large, have gotten more complicated, uh, require more skills, that your ability to attract the kind of talent that can do the work is increasingly, by just the attraction piece mm -hmm. provides you a source of competitive advantage if you're in a knowledge work, more complex work environment. So having the best, simply the best people can often produce a competitive advantage. More complex competitive advantages require more than just having great people. It's the ability of them to work together, to execute, to understand what the customer wants and translate that into services and products. But if you're in uh, many kinds of consulting or uh, uh, customer service areas, just simply having really good people is a tremendous advantage. Interesting. Um, well, thank you very much for this. Um, again, this is David Bloom with the USC Marshall School of Business talking with uh, Dr. Ed Lawler, distinguished professor and uh, director of the Center for Effective Organizations. He's the author of Talent, Making People Your Competitive Advantage. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you.